Yeah, absolutely spot on. Good morning to you, Karen. Well, look, you may be a couple of miles away in the city of London from where I am, but you're a world away from where I am in terms of the psyche of, of, of what people are looking at from President Trump, because, of course, the city of London where you are is looking for good mood music on uh, deals with trade, deals on defence, strategic alliances, special relationships, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm afraid the protesters here in London are looking at a whole different set of things. But uh, we'll park those two just for the moment. I'll come back to the protest that's the story. But uh, absolutely right, Karen. I mean, there has been a rocket straight away uh, put under Mrs. May by Mr. Trump's interview with The Sun. Uh, and I know our other correspondents are going to be talking about this later on, but basically supporting Boris Johnson in any way, shape or form, saying that she didn't listen to his advice. and It's not the kind of Brexit that he or the British people kind of thought. And saying that Mrs. May, whilst he quite liked the lady, uh, didn't take his advice uh, and has gone down a different route as well. That is going to go down like a lead balloon uh, with the cabinet office and with number 10 Downing Street as well. So she's got a lot of damage limitation already. And how similar is that to what we saw just a couple of days ago when you and I and Jeff were watching on Squawk Box how Mr. Trump took on the Germans and then walked away from NATO claiming he'd got a huge increase in spending, i.e. he went in, he criticised and claimed he'd got something from it as well. I wonder what his tactic is for those checkers talk today. And I know we've got Jeff coming up later on uh, to talk about that from Buckinghamshire. Now, let you, me tell you a little bit about my day. We finished quite late last night here because we had been following the steady build-up of protesters at Winfield House, and we'll come to a report later on with Hadley there. Now, Winfield House is Woody Johnson's London residence, and uh, uh, the president referred to that earlier. He arrived uh, in Marine One at 2.30 yesterday, flanked by these Osprey uh, vehicles, which are quite extraordinary, part airplane, part helicopter as well with his entourage. And as his uh, vehicle came down, his helicopter came down, a huge cacophony of noise erupted from various groups, and I'm talking 10, 20, 30 protest groups, you name them, everyone, CND, Young Socialists, uh, Momentum, Stop the War, War on Want, they're all there, the whole um, desperate bunch, so to speak, coming together for a mass protest. Not so mass last night, I thought there were a lot of press and only a few hundred people there last night, so I was underwhelmed by the numbers that the protesters had said they were going to get, but today is the big one. Now, we have a headline figure of 50,000. I've heard from various people it could be as much as 100,000. And these protests, although London is the hub, are going on throughout the country. Oxford, Buckinghamshire, Windsor, major cities throughout the country as well. But this is the big one. And I spoke to one of the organisers, uh, Assad Raymond, about this. I said, look, come on, guys. This is the democratically elected president of the United States. We have an important trading relationship with them. We have an important security relationship with them. This is not a state visit. Surely it is right that the president is here in the UK. Let's listen into Assad's response. What we don't think should be happening is our government shouldn't be rolling out the red carpet, it shouldn't be trying to normalise him. Uh, the policies he represents are not normal and we should not be trying to uh, uh, buddy up to a man who says that his policies, when he, when, he, when he talks about his trade policies, are about lowering food standards, ripping up environmental protections, weakening our labour protections, about you know giving green light to... Yeah. American corporations to be able to access the NHS. These are all policies that were ultimately rejected by British people. So, yes, he is the President of the United States. He's one of the most powerful people in the world. But this is a person who uses that authority to kick down and to punch down on the most vulnerable people. There you go. That, that's what makes a democracy. But now, let me just tell you, Karen, I know we've got a whole host of questions you and I are going to shoot around on this one. Let me just tell you what happens here today. Right, so, uh, 8.30, the inflation of the baby blimp to, uh, to my left down here at Whitehall and Westminster. Westminster Gardens, controversially, between 9.30 and 11.30, they're going to let this 30-foot baby blimp go up. The president is scathing about it. Uh, the Republicans overseas on our website, and there's a great piece on there, saying it's cringeworthy, it's embarrassing. Well, again, it is a form of very direct democracy. Of course, the president won't see it because he's only travelling by Marine One uh, in his visit in the United Kingdom. So that goes up and is up for a couple of hours. Sadiq Khan finally allowed that to go up. And don't forget, we've got a great interview with Sadiq Khan later on today in programming. Uh, but the main focus is this march. Now, they're going to gather after around about 1 p.m. Portland Place, this is uh, over my right shoulder, uh, northwest of where I currently am. Portland Place, it's north of Oxford Circus, north of Regent Street. And then there's going to be a rally 
there's going to be speeches uh, and then they're going to make their way down across Oxford Circus, the great shopping hub, down Regent Street, the very elegant Georgian facades there. And then they're going to come down Haymarket to here, Trafalgar Square, which historically, of course, has had so many rallies over the years. Outside South Africa House to my left, where the anti-apartheid rallies were as well. Poll tax rallies. I remember walking through this very square uh, in the early 90s. Actually, I was going to the theatre and there was a poll tax riot going on around me as well. Uh, so this is the hub of so many protests over the years. This is where the main demonstration will be. Uh, protesters think they could get to, uh, what, 100,000 plus. Uh, the lower figure, around about 50,000. Karen, it's going to be a hell of a day. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.